Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. Well, it's me, Calderness. This week we're talking about all sorts of cool next phase stuff. We had an unboxing, we had shorts going up, and also there's a figures.com article. We're going to talk about all the cool next phase goodness that's been coming down the pipeline. This is episode 503. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional Hero Clicks help. I have the high ground. Oh yeah, you may have the high ground. It's over, Simeon. Yeah. Instant deadpan. Yeah. Oh, oh, six yeah. oh, people yeah. think I am funny. I'm your Captain America. That was just you in a costume. You absolute fool. Simeon will be able to edit that out. That's cool because it's expensive. I'm going to make hero quits like that for everyone. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Use code DIAL5, D-I-A-L-5, for 5% off your Cool Stuff Inc. order. Stacks, baby. It's stacks. And if you want to buy straight from the source, go to shop.wizkids.com. Use code DIALH10, D-I-A-L-H-10, for 10% off your Hero Clicks order. Not usable. With all sorts of stuff, pre-orders, specialty things, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But for some stuff, enjoy ten percent off. Joining me, like always, in the studio is Simeon Bruce. What's going on, Simeon? Ooh, I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm pumped. I'm Hyped. pumped, man. It's building. It's, uh... Hype is building. Oh, you can't stop it, bro. It's one brick, one hype brick after another hype brick. Just building, dude. We're just building up. We erecting hype over here. This is the great wall of hype is going on right now. It's awesome. Yeah, brick by brick, we built this city. <laughs> Not on rock and roll. See, it works because on... like you build things with bricks, and also yeah. people be opening bricks. Just saying. You know, can you imagine? Can you imagine somebody? All like, right. It's like a. a if I could only a imagine. Hundreds, like you know, like ancient structure. It's like pub that's been in England for you know the last 500 years and someone just starts opening the bricks on the side of it and they're like oh interesting stuff in this and then it just collapses that's that's what uh our house is going to be like in uh Pretty a thousand much. years yeah it's, it's it's built out of bricks big facts that's so insanely true to me <laughs> made you happy this last week my man a few things made me happy this last week i I have joined the ranks of the few, the proud, the very, very few, very proud. No, 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 not Marines. No, uh, people who have played Kong. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, I think I'm, I'm probably one of, I don't know, a very select few. There's only, what, two, three other people? Three? There's three other people there's, that there's own three other Kong people that own a Kong. Right now. Yeah. yeah. Um, one of them is Alex Mater. He got one Correct. for winning... Uh, 300 singles or 300 modern single um, I can't remember I wasn't there for whoever won the auction and then I, I don't don't man, remember I really don't remember who so got Ethan the Jacobs Royal. got the Kong from the Battle Royal okay so crazy that two people that go to Rainbow Comics are Kongers fellow Kongers <laughs> yes I don't remember who won it from the auction actually feel bad I don't yeah, remember I, but it, either way there's a very select few of them out there and the uh, this three, one doesn't yeah. even belong to me it's it was just uh borrowed for for a moment in time and the, uh to that, dial h kong yes yeah it made me it right happy. now looking at it right now it's very cool yeah but you gotta you gotta play it and i I liked watching your games for a little bit it was pretty fun pretty sweet but we'll, we'll get into those Actually, here in a second. I'm just going to shout out what made me happy this week quick, and then we can get into what we played this week. Um, what made me happy? Gas stations. Uh, gas stations make me so happy. I love gas station snacks. I love getting things from gas stations. Shout out my man Ray at the Quick Trip. I won't say which one. I won't say his last name initial. I won't totally dox Ray. Um, but I was getting just a ghost, and my little brother and I were talking about like candy and then Ray goes, well, what's your favorite kind of candy? And I'm like, oh, well, I mean, like, you know, Reese's, chocolate, peanut butter, you know. And he's like, you're getting a, a Swedish fish ghost and you don't even like gummies? And I'm like, oh, I really don't like gummies, man. And he's like, well, they're way better than that fake chocolate you put in your body. And I'm like, Ray, whoa. Whoa. 
<laughs> a lot of heat. And it was like, and you, like, how do you eat that processed peanut butter? I'm like, Ray, whoa, 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 Ray. Calm down, calm down. He's, and then he was like, nah. Gelatin-based I Yo, dude, he was like the Haribo Sours. Okay. The Haribo Sours. That's the best stuff right there, man. But how do you eat that disgusting fake chocolate peanut butter? And I'm like, man, I really like Reese's, Ray. I don't know. But I don't know. He said it like real jokingly, real fun. And then we like walked out and he was like, oh, I'm kidding, guys. Have a good one. He was, it was just a really fun interaction. Um, and then later that day, I go to another gas station for supper because, ooh, it's the best food on the planet. I don't know why. I just love going to gas stations. Love the gas station food. Uh, and then I'm wearing my new uh, Powerpuff Girls shirt. And someone's like, yo, man, that's a really cool shirt. And I take off my jacket. And I'm like, well, check out the back. And they're like, yo, that is awesome. And it was just like a really fun interaction. So that's what made me happy this week. Also, I guess I'm reading Avengers Twilight. If you like the Avengers, if you like Captain America, if you like fun alternate future version stories, Chip is Chip Zardsky or however you say his last name. He's knocking out of the park. I really like Avengers Twilight. It's at issue two right now. I've been enjoying it. It continues to be a really good book. So there is that. So those that's the stuff that made me happy this week. But we can jump and, oh, yes, we do need another version of Captain America as an old man. Please, the two versions from Earth-X are not enough. I want old man Cap from Avengers Twilight. Please, be hilarious. Just another, just more old man than Captain America in the game. Yeah, uh, Chip, Chip uh, I won't say the name of it uh on the podcast but wrote one of my favorite uh him and matt fraction which matt fraction did the that amazing hawkeye run they did an amazing uh image comic together that was oh sure it was different and it was hard to order by name i will say so if you know what i'm talking Ah. about you'll know instantly what i'm talking about because it was hard to go up to like anybody and be like may i purchase this comic and they would just look at you as if you were a criminal uh which like was the basis of the comic was like it was based around criminals so yeah uh but interesting no uh very good writer done some of like the the better batman issues and some of the better Daredevil issues for sure i haven't followed up on this uh the new avengers run with him though it's good it's like you know two issues out it's good just again alternate future marvel universe stuff it's really cool though it's very corporations run the world so you know it's super fiction like it's so not like it's so totally out of uh i'm not going to continue with this bit anyways very boys-esque i guess actually it's very much like a vought owns like the avengers Uh, but it's not not vought it's like whatever company like stark industries or something right and it's on like the second or third iteration of the Avengers where it's like, oh, yeah, that's Captain America. I'm like, no, that's who who is currently Captain America. It's saying like taking legacy characters too far and like all this. It's really interesting. It's a really interesting book. Anyways, check out Avengers Twilight if you haven't already. Two issues out right now. Get it, Go support your local comic store. But yeah, we played 500 points Golden Age. I think that, like, that was straight up it. It was just 500 points Golden Age. You could play anything right to me and i don't think there's much of a ban list no it, it, it's the usual dragon's lair you know like be within reason be reasonable yeah. we don't don't be absurd we don't list out a ban list because there's no one that's like well you didn't specify these figures so didn't here play, they are I like you didn't play the instant game winning combo of mission points yeah. or whatever else or like felix faust and yeah, no one's playing like morphing jar or felix yeah faust or any like wild wild broken stuff that like you could play in golden and is yeah. fun to like it is funny when those instant like combos pop it off is. it is funny it's just not fun to play against it's like it's fun to theory craft and be like look this would win in one turn and you're like ah yes it would don't bring that somewhere though yeah please i don't want to play against that i don't want to have no. fun on my <laughs> casual hero clicks sunday on my weekend novel idea i would like to have fun uh, so, yeah, so yeah, so it was just a fun time. The unspoken rule of just have a fun time, play a fun team. And Simeon, you played an awesome 500 point team that yeah. I love. Called her message to me and said, Hey, do you want to play 500 point Kong tomorrow? And I said, Yes, yes, I do. <laughs> uh, so, game one uh, was against some spider family. 
Um, I can't remember the exact build out for this, but it was mostly out of uh, Spider-Man Venom Absolute Carnage. So it was that era of Spider-Man family because their cards still said wild card for the Spider-Man team ability. That's like how I knew they were old enough. Ah. Um, So it was like Carnage and man, I can't remember. I can't remember all of his main attackers, but I know Carnage was one of them. There's a couple different like randoms. Um, But luckily not all of them had super senses either traded or on dial. So that's like one of Kong's biggest weaknesses is if they can hit, he has battle fury, his whole dial he can deal penetrating damage, but if they have super senses and you just start missing attacks, then it's like really rough. And it was a very good game. It came down to, uh, I actually have a picture, so I could just look at it real quick. Uh, but I know that it came down to Steel Serpent, um, the Resculpt, which is Iron Fist. So I can't remember if Iron Fist is... I don't remember if Iron Fist is the common. and Yeah, Iron Fist is the common. Steel Serpent was the uncommon. The Super Air Carnage. The Super Air Superior Spider-Man. Uh, Venom Ghost Spider. Ghost Spider. <laughs> Not Venom Ghost Spider. Just both one of uh, the common one and then the Super Air Venom ah. version. And then uh, I think a rare Iron Spider. Which some of these characters got a huge boost. That Iron Spider... I don't know what set he's from because he doesn't. He didn't even have Indom. Ice. Oh. Oh wait, no, they wouldn't have in Spider-Man Venom Absolute Carnage. That was before. Yeah, they would. Yeah. Okay, so, so yeah, the he's also from that set. So, yeah, it was Iron Fist, Steel Serpent, um, Absolute Carnage, su- Superior Spider-Man, Venom's Ghost Spider, Ghost Spider, and Iron Spider, and the whole tactic in this team was. Uh, essentially just roll really high because there was no prob on this team. There was two perplexes, but I quickly like took those out. And so it was precision strike, having some empower, and then having just a lot of like flurry, which for better or worse, like most Spider-Man sets, most uh, close combat characters like Iron Fist, like uh, Steel Serpent, those kind of dudes tend to get flurry. And so, yeah, there was a lot of empower going on. There was a lot of uh, stuff like that. I think there was a few shots taken, but it ended up being Iron Fist, Steel Serpent, and Superior Spider-Man were the last three. And I did one quake that took all three of them out. And he got Kong down to click 15. So in, like, the totality of the match, probably 40-minute match, I think. I don't think we ended too quick. Um, Yeah. It took, it took me going to click fifteen and quaking, and uh, this was the first match. So like I learned, oh, I could like charge quake nothing and just generate whatever terrain I want, and then I could have that terrain in hand, or I could just stay on it. And so the one that I was like the go-to, I think, was Kong quaking and staying on top of like the banana pile, because then I've got a plus one for ranged attacks because i'm in four squares of hindering so no matter what square they're targeting that's a plus one and if for whatever reason i just end up on a bad click or if they knock me off of a uh, stop click i can heal back to a stop click and then free Mm, regen when i have two action tokens uh which is just that ended up happening a few times throughout the day the second match was against that was mike he was running the ghost rider squad which was like the new alejandra the new johnny uh king of hell the 10 million bc mammoth ghost rider which would have just absolutely wrecked kong if he didn't reduce penetrating damage like i don't at the end of this game i don't know how much penetrating damage i would have taken from mystics alone but then you double that because of the mammoth, his like whole trait, and I don't know if there's a dial long enough where like anyone would have survived that. But it was yeah, it was uh, the Alejandra from Fantastic Four, the non prime, the like single base one, the Alejandra from Wheels of Vengeance, the Johnny from King of Hell, the from Wheels of Vengeance, and then the Mammoth Ghost Rider, and I just. Turn one moved Kong, quaked to generate like the 
whatever the weird like bent piece is, <laughs> like the blocking. Oh, it's called twisted metal. Oh Sam. yeah, twisted metal. Yeah, uh, it's awesome. Sweet tooth. That's what it is. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Kong generated sweet tooth from the twisted metal game, and then the second action that I took that turn was just moving up to his starting area and just standing there. And I'm like, I have a 22 defense and I hope you don't hit me. And for the quite a while, so like it actually took Mike quite a bit longer to crack me than it took Jason because Jason like crit hit me with a precision strike attack. So um, it was oh. like the first opening volley. I didn't even have a chance to attack with my 14 during that game because it was just instant like crit hit which is a thing when you're running a one man army that's like a thing that's eventually going to happen is someone's just going to hit you and I think that's the takeaway of this Kong uh, as like a boss piece is like someone eventually will just get lucky enough to hit you but no I whittled down his I quickly realized that like having him, him having two probs was bad so I whittled down his mammoth I tried to immediately hit him with that twisted metal terrain and whiffed that attack, which just sucked. And then second attack did hit, but uh, obviously the terrain was already gone. So I didn't get like the bonus to damage. And then I just spent a long time healing and attacking and healing and attacking and healing, and attacking. And he eventually got me down to click 17, which is another stop click. I believe it's either 17 or 16. And then I just healed back to 15 and then he hit me two again and then I'd heal back. So it'd be like, I'd clear one token and then he'd hit me to my stop click. And then I'd uh, use like my action to do something like attack. And then I'd regen for free right back off of it. I was, my D six rolls were hot in every game that I did. Cause my impervious rolls were on I mean, that's fire. What you want. Yeah. The amount of times where someone would hit me and I would impervious out of it, I was just so grateful because it's a normal impervious roll. Um, and then my final game was against a Prime Spider-Man, and then it was a Super Iron Spider, which had a had an attack power or a trait that I was not like super familiar with. So I obviously knew what Prime Spider-Man could do. But Iron Spider, the non-prime, has just... He has charge, flurry, and then part of his speed power is power, make up to three attacks. And it doesn't say close or range, so he's top dial, and he does the wall crawler thing, and then he's just like, I'm going to power uh, shoot you three times. And I was like, well, that's that sucks, because <laughs> he's a 12 for four top dial. And so I did not make good choices and targets in this game. But I still managed to kill Prime Spider-Man. I still managed to like damage the whole team quite a bit. He was also running the uh, Madam Web from the newest set. So like that Madam Web. People are starting to realize how good she is, and it's very annoying. I hate her. I hate her so much. For thirty points, she is quite insane. Prob, and then she can use Prob an additional time each turn, but only to target a character with the Spider-Man family. When it's a Spider-Man family team. Yikes. So, yeah, it was like Iron Spider. Uh, oh, he missed one of his, like, three attacks. Uh, I'll prob it again. And then the fact that he has Precision Strike. I'm still rolling Impervious because if I don't, then I'm taking two. Yeah, full damage. But, or at least for his top dial where he's four. Uh, but even if I hit Impervious, I'm still taking one. So Iron Spider just, like, doing three damage a turn. Almost guaranteed. Um because of the amount of prob and like perplexes, he was also playing two of the pointing Spider-Man uh, figures. One of which has a perplex, and when he uses it, he can re- uh, modify combat values by minus two. So that was like real big. First turn, he reduced my attack by minus two. So now I'm just a twelve, and I just like whiffed my first set of attacks, which sucked. Ugh. And then the next turn, he goes like all in on attack and dropped my defense by two, which I'm still a twenty. But yeah, like it was just with the amount of probs and stuff. I think that's how you know one man army stuff typically goes. Is if you have the right support set up and you have enough attacks, you have enough actions, you just always end up on top not always but it would have had to have gone like really bad in his favor as far as uh roles go 
And yeah, the key managed to hit a few super senses, which when he's got a 50 50 and I have no way to reduce that, that makes sense. But yeah. the one thing I will say over these three games is all three of my opponents said that this was like the, the most fun game that they played that day. They all three had a ton of fun and I didn't feel bad for playing Kong at 500. And I, I don't think that uh, most people will feel bad playing Kong at like any point value. I think that'll be a little bit like to see maybe, maybe at 50 points, people will feel bad playing him. Who knows? But uh, as far as like a one big character that really wrecks stuff and does like, which is kind of like almost too much, but not quite. It felt like a really fun boss battle for every opponent and everyone actually really enjoyed it. So I think that was my big takeaway was I was able to play something that was kind of stupidly broken for this format and still lose one game. And everyone was still really yeah. happy with the result, even if they lost. Honestly. Yeah. Okay. That's pretty sick then. Cause like no one was really preparing for Khan and you were still able to like lose a game. I like that. Honestly, like that's really cool. And people having fun trying to beat a boss battle, him being like a legit boss battle piece. That's really cool. I'm actually really happy about the way that's turned out. Good Kong. Good Kong review, Simeon. Yeah. And uh, he's, he's like 30 bucks MSRP. He might be cheaper at your local game store. Yeah. I think that it's definitely, uh, I, I would refrain from saying like have people build for like a Kong battle, but I definitely think like, throwing it as like a surprise to like one of your buddies like if you're doing like a 500 point and all of a sudden you bring kong in i think it'll be fun for both of you um if they build if they counter build kong if they know you're bringing kong they might be able to do like way better but yeah i think it's a really fun piece for sure i was impressed happy we were able to do and then yeah him being like 30 bucks is such a good price point for what kong is like man it's so awesome yeah, make sure you just have a, a lint roller before you bring your Kong. Yeah, a little to piece of the, tape, some lint. Yeah, you need to lint roll your Kong before you bring him to venues. Right on. I played a pretty simple team. It was just kind of fun. I wanted to play the Superman stunt squad, as I've called them. 500 points. Man, we could fit a couple more Superman stunters on there. Exactly what I was hoping for, so... We get uh, Doomsday at 300, Lex Luthor with the Orange Lantern Ring for 50, Bizarro, yeah, Bizarro at 60, and then finally got to play my Zod or Sanon. And then something fun you can do with Zod or Sanon is they do begin the game. So they, when you set up for the game, you place your figures on the map before the quote unquote beginning of the game. So if you have Zod or Sanon equipped and you take them from the map off to the sideline, they'll drop their equipment, right? You still have to pay for it, whatever. But the cool thing is, if it's a hell cycle, you get to choose the two squares for it to be in. And so I would just put one square in Doomsday's square, and then, boom, Doomsday's got Mystics the entire time, which is pretty cool, pretty fun. I actually ended up giving him, like, sidestep poison this game, but it's just kind of cool that you can... That's how you can give, like, Doomsday or whatever a turn one power action, pick up a hell cycle or any giant figure like that. If it's like, again, kind of only works specifically with the hell cycles or if they can sidestep on top of the equipment to pick it up. But it's pretty sweet how well that works anyway. So that was pretty fun. Pretty easy to get Zodderson on out on the board, even if there's only two, three special terrain markers to destroy since they at least get to... Uh, remove one at the beginning of each turn, which is super nice. I only played one game. It was pretty fun. Played against John. Oh, shout out Johnny. Said he was a listener to the show, so that was really cool. And then, yeah, we played a fun game. He's playing a lot of the Assassins, the Assassins Guild people from Next, not Next Phase, goodness gracious, from Notorious. That's the that's the set they're from. So that was pretty fun. Also running some other stuff. Doomsday didn't go down. It came down to just Doomsday and Zodderson on. So I was pretty impressed with how well they were able to stick through it. You know, when people are making a ton of attacks, it can be pretty good. He never once got rid of Doomsday's um, restraint token. He was like, yeah, I can't let you have Flurry. I'm like, man, very fair. Very, very, very fair. I mean, yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's just a smart call. So 
But yeah, it was a super fun game. And then the way I spent the rest of Sunday was actually a buddy of mine came over and he was interested in the game. And I said, hey, man, come over anytime you want. And I'll like run you through it. And we played some like games, like teaching him how to play. Like the first game we played were like characters with zero range had charge. And then characters that had range had running shot. And we just played a game like that. He was like, oh, this is really fun. And I'm like, all right, now let's get just the PAC out really quickly. And we're going to play with speed and defense powers. And this is just how I like to teach people how to play the game. Everybody probably does it a little different. But defense makes it feel like there's some good ebb and like, well, speed makes it the game not feel slow. Right. So I think speed powers are just super nice. And then defense helps it so not every figure feels like they're made out of paper. So pretty simple. They're not as complicated as like damage powers are. Um, so I really enjoy that. So it's pretty cool. He was able to get the hang of like some sidesteps, ESD combat reflexes, simple stuff like that. We like raided the common box and he like chose like some random figures that he wanted to play with. Uh, from like Batman team up, X Men, uh, X Swords, and stuff like that. So it was pretty fun. And he was like, "All right, man, yeah, the game is super cool, super fun. I would love to like learn more and play it." So I think it got him hooked. And then a buddy who I actually did two short films with last year was also in the store. And then like by the time everybody had left, I was still talking to him. Probably talked to him like an hour about just like hero clicks. And he had he played Yu Gi Oh and a few other card games. And he was just asking me all kinds of questions about like. What's legal to play? Are there restricted formats? Are there, is there this, that, and the other thing? Like, how much space does the game take up? Like, all this stuff. And he was talking about, like, moving to... Like, he's going to be moving soon. And it was to an area that I'm like, oh, man, so-and-so plays there. Or, you know, so-and-so plays there and there or whatever. So it was, like, really cool to, like, try to get him, like, hooked on hero clicks, Like, as he's, like, literally about to move. But he was, like, so into it. Like, he just asked me just like, a ton of questions. He's like, oh, how does, like, blind boxes work how does like buying the game work like what's like a price point for starting like what do you recommend like all that stuff we just like chatted about here looks like an hour it was like oh it was so fun so had a good day sunday even though i only really played like one real game of hero clicks and two like learner friendly teaching games of hero clicks it was such a blast it was a good week and then if you want to shout out simian we could say what the plan is for next week and maybe some listeners could send us in some builds about how they would build for next week. Oh, for next week. Ooh, I don't. I don't remember what. Oh, we did ended you up hear? Uh, uh, it was like we're doing Super Bowl uh, something. Yeah, we're doing four hundred points, Golden Age, and your team must be like Super Bowl themed. So if you okay. got like a Falcons team, you could play a bunch of Falcons, the Patriots, Giants, like, like Captain America, like Giants. Yeah. yeah. Don't know how you like Steelers. You could play Steel, and some metal people or something. People you know, that like Steel things. Ooh, people that steal things. Yeah. There you go. Some uh, some thieves guild members. Ooh. Gambit. Uh, Ant Man steals things. I don't know who steals see, things. Got, got rogues. D and D rogues. Patriots. You can only pay play characters named Patriot. Yeah. Oh geez. Uh, Just Patriot. That's all, hilarious. All five of them. Yeah. Uh, all three of them, Simeon. Oh, nice try. Yeah, it's pretty low on the, the how many page. I'm pretty sure it's just like Avengers <laughs> Civil War and then Avengers Forever. It's like that's our Patriots. Wow. That's our that's our Elijah Bradley's. Very cool. <laughs> so yeah, that's our Super Bowl theme. So if you guys have any ideas for what you would play, 400 point Super Bowl theme, let us know. But let's go ahead and chat a little bit about next phase, about our unboxing. I'm super excited. I love everything that we were able to pull and show off. We had a great unboxing, guys. Thank you guys so much for enjoying it and just enjoying our unboxing week this last week. It was really fun getting to see the comments pour in. I really appreciate everybody that showed support for Dial H and was really happy for us to finally be able to like be the first people to show off Hero Clicks. It's been a dream. Like ever since we finally got like it, for the longest time, it was a dream to finally just unbox Hero Clicks officially. Yeah, like get like a, an stuff. actual WizKids official yeah. unboxing and so we got that with the first disney plus set and now it was literally the next set which was x of swords where we got to unbox it where no one knew what was all going to be in the set yeah that and was we the haven't first been one able people were like unsure of like we we still had spoilers yeah yeah and that was the last time we've been able to do an unboxing where it's been early enough where everything wasn't already spoiled and now we get to be Pretty much the first people I get, I know we saw like Khonshu's Dial and there was some Game Trade Magazine stuff, 
But then we got to be like the spearhead first unboxers this go round of next phase. And it was just literally so awesome. And I, I love doing it. And I like hopefully you guys in the community saw how much work Simeon, Ian and myself poured into these unboxings with all the skits, uh, with all the shorts and everything we did. Because, man, it was so fun. It was a, just a massive project. And I'm just glad that everybody got to enjoy it. Yeah, and I'm glad we got the opportunity because it was literally so awesome. And I, I do want to like clear the air. I know I mentioned it on the last episode. Um, we have nothing against Scott Porter. Like Scott does an awesome job. He's an awesome unboxer. The community loves him. I think I said something like, "We're not Scott Porter. Stop asking us like about Scott." Well, <laughs> a lot of people were confused and they kept asking us stuff, and we didn't have information about why we were doing it and Scott Porter wasn't. So like we didn't know why. We didn't know if Scott was doing it. It seems at this point that like Scott isn't, but that's what it looks like. Yeah, yeah. And that's what Wizkid said. Is Scott's just not going to yeah. be unboxed in this set? Wizkid like, came Deadpool. out. They said he'll be back for the Deadpool Weapon X, whatever that set's called. Uh, which yeah. that'll be like the next big set that comes out. And so, nothing against Scott. Obviously, I think that he's like you know he's been holding down the fort for. 10 plus years long and time. maybe this is like just the one time where scheduling conflicts happened or something um but yeah it was a ton of fun to do and i think that it really i think we all realized like it is a huge undertaking to show off something for the first time yeah and then on top of that like also be like you know all eyes on you like this is like what the community is going to see for the first time when they look for this set. And so like that is a, a huge burden that like Scott has had under himself without like really the community knowing, I think this whole time is like, it is just a ton of work and a ton of effort and you want to put your best foot forward and you want to like promote these things. Cause you want people to be interested in them. You don't want to just like, uh, slog through it and be like eh, i would never play this piece like we would yeah. do for like maybe a set review but not for like an unboxing right um but yeah more so i i just think uh scott will be back and that's great but i think that the amount of work that we all put into it ian especially staying up to the goblin hours as he does oh yeah uh, <laughs> i think that uh hopefully this will be separated as in like the hero click continuity from like Scott Porter's unboxings. We, we didn't want to copy his unboxing strategy. We didn't want to do two boosters at a time because like literally that would just be copying Scott Porter's unboxings. And right. We wanted to stand out. We wanted to do something fresh, new, interesting because we knew we weren't going to be Scott Porter. Like that's, that's the one thing we can't do is be Scott Porter. So, um, yeah, looking forward to his unboxing for uh, Wolverine, Deadpool, Weapon X, that set. I think that set's going to be a ton of fun, so I'm looking forward to it. But for this set, I saw for how much set, work yeah. it was, and I, yeah. I think I'm really proud of what we did. I think uh, we did the best we could, and I'm glad that like the people that enjoyed it and enjoyed the different take and different unboxing style... Yeah, so am I. I'm, I'm happy for that. Again, ultimately, I'm just hopeful that people got to see, like, how much time, work, energy, and effort went into, like, our next phase unboxing. It was our kind of our first chance to be like, oh, man, this is, un, you know, unseen stuff. We really got to make it fun and interesting and unique for the community. And I hope at the end of the day, I hope people walked away with being like, that was like a super fun unboxing or that was really unique or that was really different. And ultimately, that's all that matters. I just really hope people just really, really enjoyed our take on an unboxing series. And I just hope they had fun. Ultimately, that's the best part about Hero Hooks is having fun, seeing cool stuff you've never seen before. And I think we knocked out of the park with just yeah. like letting people like have a good time, have an enjoyable video, have a video they could watch on their lunch break, you know, in its entirety, which is pretty cool, which is pretty, yeah. you know, novel, what a novel idea. Time. Like, yeah. Yeah, watch a video on their lunch break and and know, yeah, do whatever somebody. else. Yeah, yeah, call someone. I don't know. Do some scroll on. I don't know. You did Facebook the extra, the extra yeah. 15, 20 minutes that you had. 
whatever else you guys want to do. Yeah. Or even like, let's say your work gives you a 10 minute, 15 minute break or something in the morning. You could have watched one of our videos during that time in its entirety, which I really hope people hopefully enjoyed doing, you know, or maybe your work doesn't give you a break in the morning and you snuck off to the bathroom and watched a video that works too. Yeah. For you know? a not so, so suspicious amount of time in the yeah, bathroom. Yeah. A not yeah. so suspicious amount of time in the bathroom. I was like, a Scott trouble. Porter unboxing in the bathroom. That's a suspicious amount That's of time. Suspicious in the amount of time. Yeah. It's a suspicious amount of time. Almost a full hour on the clock, you know? So. <laughs> Yeah, hopefully people enjoyed them. I love making the skits. Simi, do you have a favorite skit that we did? Oh, I I really want like a fan vote for the skits. Ooh, I really do okay. want like a fan vote for awesome. the skits. My unbiased personal favorite was probably the Dr. Phil, Dr. Batrock. Oh, really? I don't know why that one just like resonated with me. It was like one of the shorter ones. But just seeing White Trash Calder and uh, <laughs> just, like, the dialogue being so simple. But, like, oh, God, everyone instantly recognizes, like, you know, like, the the kind of idea behind the it. The scenario, what's going on, yeah. Yeah. That was probably, like, watching back, that was my favorite, I will say. I like that. I, li- I really thought you were going to say Tony Whiskett. Tony no, Whiskett Tony, is t- so funny. Tony Whiskett is hilarious, but, like... There was so much unused footage of Tony Whiskett. There's a lot. That, There's uh, a lot. Like, I don't know if that can be my favorite because, yeah, Tony Whiskett talking about, like, how his – the pizza dough in his pizzas is, like, the secret is it's uncooked and, like uh, – Yeah. That flavor – yeah, I don't think that's a video that will ever see the light of day, but um, – Probably not. No, Tony Whiskett – I think that was just, like – that was my favorite because – There was a few people that had commented like, man, these are the best. And then like, I knew that video was going to drop and I was like, yeah, these are the best. It's the best. (laughs) Yeah. It's the best. Like that was just that. And then just, yeah. Wearing the, wearing the cutoff denim, the hat tilted in such an askew way. Yeah. That was pretty funny. Um, also the, uh, the trouble opening a booster, the booster knife. That's that was so funny. Yeah, there's gotta be a better way. <laughs> it's just ah, uh, oh man, the booster knife was great. Because that's always been a dream of mine out. to just be the doofus in one of those commercials where like I open a drawer and like endless bowls fall out of the drawer on top of my head. And I'm like, I'll never be able to organize all these bowls. And then it's like, but wait, you can, you know, like that thing is, that's just hilarious to me. I love that. Uh, so do you want to jump into just like kind of, we don't totally have to go over the dials cause we already did that. And if you guys haven't totally seen all the dials or whatever, go check out the videos, but combined with our unboxing and the action figure insider article that dropped today, shout out old Scott Rubin over here at action figure insider. He wrote this article, got an unboxing done. How are you feeling about next phase? So, well, first off, what was your favorite figure that we pulled in our brick? Uh, my favorite figure in our brick. Oh, man. Um, that's a really good question because, like, we had – I love generics. So, like, the, the tracksuit dudes were both, like, awesome to see. Uh, the Being two different, like, takes on a similar, like, kind of idea was awesome. Um we saw like a vampire dial that wasn't a vampire dial and we saw return of the goons, which I think is awesome. Some iconic moments. I think Mr. Immortal is like super high up there just because he is awesome. If you read him, you think you would think that like there'd be something crazy going on, but then he has a trait that's just free KO Mr. Immortal. And you're like, huh? So Literally because so that's funny. a separate trait that activates his other trait and it's I don't know like it's just so perfect for like the show and it's a 35 point perplex that does like a bunch of other interesting stuff um the shifting focus groots were interesting and uh I think I honestly I think my biggest favorite has to be for, at champion clicks we showed off the prime kingpin oh yeah and the reason why Prime Kingpin just resonates with me so much is so he's got Underworld team ability. He's 55 points. 
Uh, I'm not going to go over to keywords because it doesn't really matter that much. Um, but he has a trait that's tracksuit mafia. Friendly standard characters of 30 points or less can use toughness and modify attack and damage plus one. That means every goon in your arsenal, every Scott Porter, every figure that's sub 30 points, Aunt May's, uh, probably Mary Jane for the most part, like all that stuff, anything that's under 30 points, 30 points or less, even in silver that includes the super rare flash, which is interesting. Um, but oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> friendly, friendly standard characters, 30 points or less. So it doesn't include, uh, like, colossal retaliators, which is good. But they get toughness and modify attack and damage plus one, which just is insane for 55 points. That I can have a whole team of modified stats for 55. And then his whole dial is a special speed power, a special defense power, and a special damage power for six clicks and his special speed power is stealth and then power choose up to two friendly standard characters of 30 points or less within six squares move those characters up to two squares each then they may each make an attack that's awesome when i first saw that i was like instantly made me think of the joker goons that have flurry and i was like i can now move them and then flurry and they have plus one attack and damage and they get a free attack because i did that power action so, like, two two of those goons now have six attacks between the two of them with plus one attack and damage just with those two characters and this Kingpin. And then his defense is Mastermind Toughness. Kingpin's other powers have protected Outwit, which is insane. Um, this power specifically doesn't get Outwit because it says his other powers. But then he has Leadership and Outwit as his defense power. So, I just really like this guy, I think. As far as a kingpin of the underworld, uh, someone who's like moving stuff around, he's not like he's not crazy defensive. He's not crazy like reducing damage. Uh, he's not dealing a ton of damage himself. He's not like charge flurry, blah blah blah. He's just behind the scenes and really doing a really good job. I love the design of this figure. I think it is one of my favorite like behind the scenes. Uh, ruler kind of like characters. I think they did a wonderful job presenting him as like before he is the main villain that like appears and actually starts fighting. I think this is what Kingpin makes like the most sense of. Yeah, that's legit. Honestly, him being able to, uh, what's it called? Every single goon empower every single goon and all that. It's just a unique way. Usually it's like TK, Mastermind, you know, stuff like that for, like, empowering or, like, a behind-the-scenes type of person. So just, he just has a newer, more interesting kind of unique take on it, which I, it's I simple, love that it, like, it's so cool. It doesn't work with bystanders. It's, like, specific to yeah standard by, it's uh, standard generics. Yeah. Like, generic that characters is, really cool. is what it's going for. It's not going for bystanders. It's not going for, like, generated characters or just, like, cheap, you know, uh, retaliators or anything like it's standard characters 30 points or less yeah it's awesome i like that too where it's not just like an easy cheese thing so yeah and we even saw the normal kingpin today too which is really cool so now we know both the a and b we know everything about kingpin oh yeah secret not safe vincent did not for no did not did not did, 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 whatever it's called if, the if guy from full metal jacket you. <laughs> one of like the so similar to like gary oldman Vincent D'Onofrio, I think, has just, like, aged so well in time. Like, so well. Um, Gary Oldman, like, started off with, like, uh, Fifth Element, and I can't remember, like, some of his... Uh, he was in, gosh, what's the, the Professional? The one where, like, Natalie Portman was, like, 11 years old or whatever. Oh, okay. Um, but he played a bad guy for, like, a long time and just was, like, a character actor that, like, you never really, like... The movie wasn't about him, but he was like, did a good job. It's a really good supporting role. And Vincent D'Onofrio is now like that for me, where like Gary Oldman is now like also that. Like he just, every role he does, it's just like knocked out of the park. But now I've like recognized him enough where I'm like, oh, that's who that is. Yeah. When I first saw him as Kingpin in like the Netflix series, and then I saw him in like again in like the MCU series, I was just like, this is. 
I don't know how anyone could ever possibly top this as like Kingpin, like yeah. Wilson Fisk, like cannot ever be another actor. This is insane. And I haven't watched the echo series still, but yeah, the, the non prime has traded willpower and like, this is a more up in your face version of Kingpin, right. Where the Throwing other hands. one is, yeah. The other one's like behind the scenes, guiding everybody. Uh, this Kingpin is willpower opposing characters within four squares. Can't use willpower, which is, Something we haven't seen in like a little while is like, you know, people shut off stuff, like just straight up shut off a power within a, a certain amount of time or a certain amount of squares. Uh, he has a defense power on his top dial that it's an invincible mastermind and then protected at wit, but only from characters of a lower point value. So if they're under 90 points, they can't outwit, which is probably most characters he'll face off against. I would say, yeah, I don't, unlikely. I, don't I mean, know. 90 is. Kind of crazy that 90 is like pretty high up there nowadays yeah. with points. 90 is a big investment. Then he has leadership and outwit for, for his first four clicks. So that means his 90 point dial or his 50 point dial. And then if you go to his 50 point dial, starts on click four, he has just regular uh, mastermind. He doesn't have the invincible mastermind, which is fine. I think he's going to be a great sealed piece. Depends on how much stuff has the underworld team ability and like keywords that match, but he's going to be a great taxi plus just top dial and sealed being a 12 for four with super strength, potentially hitting you for seven or not seven, uh, five, six damage isn't out of like the question. I haven't yeah. seen how much how empowers in this set, but uh, there's probably a few empower pieces, and yeah, making him a six or seven would probably be fairly easy. Yeah, dang, I think so. I guess before we get too far into all the stuff that he's pulled, uh, my favorite thing that we pulled, obviously, Steve. Like, holy smokes, I love that he exists. There's not the greatest reception on Facebook, but I think the people that do like him see a lot of use in a really like crazy cool like utility piece, which is really neat. Yeah, I'll say I love the idea of like I'll say that he's, he's just not good because like he doesn't have any traits. So yeah. on dial, he forty points. He's an eleven for zero and fifteen defense the whole dial, and he has yeah. no traits or special defense power. So like. He's it's just a big point investment for an eleven for zero, right? Yeah, eleven for zero. Well, yeah, exactly. That's all he it's is. It's not like it's, it's not like triple target zero. in cap could be good, right? No, there's no, no way that's ever good. And even if that no, was it, like, that's all he is, right? That's all he can do. Yeah, that's all he can do is triple target in cap. He's he does literally nothing else. <laughs> literally nothing else at all, uh, besides triple target in cap. And I mean, like, 40-point perplex, there's cheaper perplexes. There's cheaper ways to get plus ones on things. Who would ever pay this? It's horrible. Yeah, the uh, the reception's been so weird. But I, I love this chase. I love these. I mean, in my opinion, way more interesting than the gods are. The gods are like, I'm never going to play this dial. You're going to be 10 points, and I'm going to give somebody province stealth. Or your yeah, zero personally, points. I would never give you problems, doll. Yeah, personally, I like, would rather have a on map piece than a sideline. Yeah, thing. So it's just kind of weird, but no, it's super fun what he does. The the zero damage where like he's an actor, like he's not like it's kind of funny when they give like even like Donnie Blaze or like Madison, who we saw throughout the week and like who we saw today. They have like two damage. Where it's like, okay, I guess if these people really wanted to like kind of fight, they kind of could. But I love the idea that Steve's like, no, he is an actor. He's not going to fight anyone at all, ever. He's literally just going to like be zero damage and in-cap people with his performance, captivate them with his performance. Really cool. Um, the whole choreography deal where the more people move and hit, the better they are at what they do, and they like they flow better, and it's all very movement-based until it's just eventually like prob and per safeguard outwit pulse wave, which, albeit is like turn four or five so it's gonna take a while to get there to like outwit pulse wave but like man by turn three everybody has prob i mean it's it's map cool. wide so like depending on well, who you play him range. with it's in his range he well, has six range right which is pretty dang good and it's not line of fire which is also awesome it's it's within range for the effect but at the end of your turn 
if two or more friendly characters moved and hit this. Oh, target. that is true. So like that gaining is choreography wild. tokens, he doesn't have to be within range at all. Yeah. So potentially turn one or two, your whole team has sidestep fairly easily. Um, at the end of turn two or three, you could automatically, uh, this character automatically break away, breaks away, which is Steve and then anyone within his range. So yeah, like, it builds up, which like giving everyone within his range sidestep is insane already. I think that's worth a 40 points plus like perplex. And then if you manage to keep him alive and you manage to like keep your team going and you get third turn, everyone gets prob control. That is suddenly like a huge momentum shift where I don't know, like most yeah. people won't be able to like recuperate from that. I think like, I mean, you, that's you just break the constructs team. Yeah, within you, you Six play him on any theme, that, like whatever. You break it because he's only got celebrity, but uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. You just break theme team, or I mean, celebrity theme team isn't that insane to play? It's not bad. Like, yeah. I do want to try to put him on like a Doom Patrol theme team, since the chief literally has power, move somebody five squares, and then Steve can be one of the celebrities you turn into Doom Patrol. Plus, when you outsider Steve, he'll have his full range for hypersonic, which is also oh. cool. I was kind of messing around with like a Doom Patrol like team yeah. build. I mean, that's like a ten square. Yeah, right. Like now, that's a ten square sees through hindering hypersonic in triple target in cap piece, which is pretty good. Combine that with the Chief's power, move five squares. That's a full map reach triple target in cap. And then you can play some other pieces with it that can maybe also do some full map reach stuff or whatever, which is really cool. So I don't know. It's fun. The I can do this all day. High note that he's hitting there is hilarious. Living Legend is coming back, which is great. Willpower is great for him. The fact that he just has a stop exactly mid dial and it's called intermission makes my theater heart very happy. So I don't know. It's really cool. It's very flavorful. He's very fun. And I know people are like, uh, it doesn't have big number isn't main attacker for 30 points or whatever they don't really see the value in it which is a shame but hopefully more people can be like oh wow it's pretty cool because i'm like wow literally captain america and musicals some of my favorite things it's really cool but yeah just big shout out there that was just awesome that we got to pull that and i get to force ian to make let me talk about it, it was grand <laughs> yeah i and i honestly we haven't seen most of the chases but I think these super like tech pieces that take a little bit more work and then a little bit more finesse. I think in the long run, these always have more longevity than uh, like just like thirteen for five charge super strength. You know, whatever. Um, not saying that's a chase that we'll get, but like we have had that in the past. So who knows? Very true. Uh, another cool thing that we pulled was the trick arrows. I'm not gonna yeah, go into well, those the, were insane, man. Yeah, Holy I'm God, not gonna go cool. into all the trick arrows because you should just watch the video and look at all of them. But it's ten points. It was a it. There was some discussion on HD Realms. It was yeah. a common slot that it took up in the booster. Um, people are saying like it had a super rare card, which is just what all equipment has, including like, yeah. the hell cycle. Even the, like the rares. Yeah, yeah the hell cycles have super rare card. The rare, like old Wonder Woman equipment has yeah. super rare, whatever. So uh, from our yeah, from our unboxing, assuming that's going to be like the way it is, if you pull a trick arrow, you will get all seven cards, which is like all seven different effects that you can do with that trick arrow. And some of them are quite insane, I think. Um, I think the the two dangerous one is that it uh, instead dangerous. of normal damage, deal three to a chosen character and all characters adjacent to them. Yeah, so the the two dangerous arrow, you choose a hit character and then instead of normal damage, you deal three damage to the chosen character and all characters adjacent. So it's like energy explosion, except it does three to everyone, and then you knock back each damage character one square, and then also. Let's see. I thought there was one that might have placed them. Oh, no, it's the, the penetrating damage one. Uh, the electrical. You choose a hit character. Instead of normal damage, you deal two penetrating damage to the chosen character and up to one other opposing character within two squares of the opposing character, of the chosen character, which is insane. Just, like, two pen damage, and then 
oh, you're also, like, you're not adjacent, but you're, like, right next to him ish I'm also going to, like, zap you. Uh, USB just, like, unequips. I love, equipment. I've hacked your equipment. That is hilarious. Yeah, that one's so fun. Especially, like, the motorcycle. It makes sense for, like, motorcycles and, like, random stuff. It doesn't make any sense for, like, swords. It's like somebody's like, no. I've got the soul sword. It's like, I've shot your soul I've sword with a USB arrow. Or my USB. Oh, and you know. Like, the, the soul sword has gotten a virus from the USB. Um, but, no, it was, it was a really fun unboxing. I think that every day has its own merits, and you guys should watch every single day and every single short because there's also shorts and then now we're moving on to pizza boxes yeah which are a lot their, of pizza. yeah it's their their whole own thing i i really liked the first pizza box that we got to show off today the hulk and she hulk are really fun they're very like specifically their first episode them fighting on the beach which is really cool and even their Team up card, which is very pizza based, is also. I don't. Do they eat pizza in that episode? Did I miss something? Maybe I, they do, and I need to rewatch it. Maybe that's what they eat when they're just kind of hanging out. Maybe they do I, eat pizza. I kind of want to say yes, but maybe that's just okay. me remembering it wrong. Because I want to say when Jen like goes back to Jen and like she's no longer She Hulk. I want to say I remember her holding like a slice of pizza. Okay, but it's when they're sitting at like the weird little tiki bar the that Hulk has bar, made. Yeah, and so it could have been anything else. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, very true. It's fun though. Like their dials are very specifically the flavor text is very much what it's supposed to be. I really, really enjoy it. The team up cards even are about the conversation they're having where Jen. Jen's is called Gossiping About Steve, which is, of course, the Steve Rogers Mux uh, line that she says, which I can't say I loved, but it was fun. So I'm glad that that is in here. I guess I'm glad that that's in Hero Clicks. I think other people are probably happier than I am that that's in here. I think it's really funny. It's just really funny that that specific scene, specific line is mentioned in Hero Clicks and that it's a team up with Steve Rogers. Really, really, really funny. Um, and then, like, same thing, the Hulk line about, like, Tony mostly just complained about Steve, which is the exact conversation they're having, is also just hilarious. Uh, I like them, though. I love She-Hulk's quake ability, where she chooses, like, a path within four that she quakes from, and then everybody next to that path is then the target of the quake. Really cool. I really, really, really like it. Hulk's balance ability, where whether he's on the front half of his dial or the back half of his dial, he can just say, I don't have these powers, instead I have all the powers on my front half, or instead I have all the powers on my back half. That's really cool. Um, I think they're really unique. And then as we get into the pizza boxes, guys, you'll see, you'll probably have already seen the next days, but not the final pizza box. I absolutely love the final pizza box. It is so cool, and I think people are really going to get a kick out of it, because... Holy smokes, like reading it, I was like, this can't be real. This is so good. This is insane. So I hope that is also everybody's reaction to the final pizza box because it is really good and it is yeah. almost kind of insane. It's really cool. We also, we talked about the booster box, but for anyone that hasn't yeah, watched our videos booster. or our lives, um, the Werewolf by Night, so it shows Werewolf by Night, Hawkeye, I Am Groot, and Moon Knight. And then obviously She-Hulk is on the front. Uh, I don't remember what's on the back. But Werewolf by Night is all in black and white, which is incredibly interesting. So cool. Incredibly cool. I hope that that's like a thing that actually happens. Hawkeye, we've seen everything that's on, well, we've seen most of everything that's on the Hawkeye blur blurb, because that's the super rare Kate that we showed off at Champion Clicks. Uh, that's the rare Lucky that has been half shown off, potentially completely shown off. Um, we've seen the Conchu from the Moon Knight. We showed off the Moon Knight that's holding his little throwing star, uh, moon sickle, whatever you call those. And then it, there's the alligator god. I think that's um, Amut. Um, and then the I Am Groot. We have Bubble Bath Groot. We have uh, Bad Hair Day Groot. And then we have PJ's dancing before he goes to sleep, Groot, I guess. So those are the sides of the boxes. 
I don't. Do you know, remember what's on the back of the box? Is there anything crazy on the back? I can't. Back remember. of the pizza box? No, on the the booster boxes. The back is Madison Wong duo, which we know is a chase from the hint card, and then the She Hulk jumping out of the TV. Oh, that's, that's right. So the we still Samara, haven't seen those. Smart She Hulk from uh, yeah. There'll be an episode of She-Hulk where the ring rehappens and she climbs through TVs to get to people. Yeah, that's like actually a terrifying sculpt, by the way. Like jumping out of the television, staring into your soul. Oh yeah, really I was a, I was a young teen when the ring came out, like the American version uh-huh. of that movie, and that is a terrifying image, especially. Like I, I get it's like She Hulk like breaking the fourth wall, but it's it's terrifying because uh, nothing good happens when something climbs out of your TV. Oh. Poltergeist thought is that. Yeah, nothing, nothing good's ever happened. Yeah. Climbs out of the TV. No, like the they're here. I don't care Ooh. if it's She Hulk. I don't want anyone to be here. I don't even yeah. like when regular people are here. My doorbell <laughs> rings. That's terrifying. No, thank you. I don't want my, like suddenly my like TV static just turns into like somebody crawl. No, no. Yeah, absolutely terrifying. Uh, but yeah, actionfigureinsider.com. Yeah, man. They did a booster or a brick unboxing. They showed off a few figures. Um, what is the first fig? I already talked about the rare kingpin from what they showed off. Yeah. What's the first figure you want to talk about from this? I got to talk about Man Thing. I really like Man Thing a lot here. All right. He is uh, I'm zero speed blitz three. the the commons. Oh, okay, so, I guess yeah. If you want to you want to run through the uh, yeah. the commons. We, I mean, we can take turns going through the commons quick. All right, I'm just gonna uh, real quick. I'm not gonna get into the dial, but like, un- uh, the common Yelena has the target trait and then a charge stealth special speed power, fifty five points. Uh, combat reflexes the whole dial. It seems like a really good sealed piece but for 55 points i don't know how many assassin or marksman or martial artist spy thunderbolts assassin what uh, the, the keywords i don't know what it's going to do other than just be like a good sealed piece yeah but that's that's yelena and she's just in like a blackout suit with uh the night vision goggles really hard to like see her you like see like this black outline and then night vision goggles is yeah. what it like on the car it's really funny. Sculpts- very stealthy. It sculpt's very funny. Uh, Wong is pretty cool. He is a very simple 40 points. It's like phasing TK ESD prop. That's his entire dial for four clicks, which is, I think, a great sealed piece. He also has flight, so it's flight phasing, so a good carry and sealed. He's TK and prop, which you always need in sealed, so 16 is a common. And then his trait is more mystical in my sleep. Other characters can't use mystics, including friendly characters. Make sure to say that. So, like... There's a decent amount of mystics, some world by night, like Jack Russell's got mystics. There's other Wongs in the set that have mystics. Um, yeah. There's Donnie Blaze has mystics. Like there's a handful of mystical people in the set, and not a ton of invincibles. So this can be pretty helpful. But I think Wong is like an amazing sealed pick. He might have a life in pulp, but I don't know. Maybe. What's hilarious is if you play two of these common Wongs, no one gets mystics. Oh, including no. Including themselves. So sad. No mystics. <laughs> they cancel each other out. So, like, uh, now that it is an interesting trait, it's funny that, you, yeah, you just straight up cancels it. But it is, it's such a, it's such a, like, I am designed for utility kind of, like, figure. Very have, much I have so, TK. Yeah. I have phasing My flight. utility Wong. And I have prob. Yeah. Great figure, though. Um, Nicky Ramos, uh, that's, of course, is a, Jen Walters fun little um, side character. I don't know if she's like a paralegal or what she is exactly I in the show. Right? That's Jen's paralegal. Yeah. So she has a trait. Jen, do your thing. When establishing theme teams, Nikki Ramos gains the keywords of a friendly character named She-Hulk or Jen Walters. She only has the celebrity keyword normally, but she gains whatever other ones. And then she has a special attack power her old dial that is incapacitate. When Nikki Ramos uses it after resolutions, she may remove an action token from an adjacent friendly character, which is real clutch, real cool. 25 points with perplex. That means she can make herself a 12, not only action up an opposing character, but also take one off of potentially Jen or somebody. Yeah. Um, but yeah, very, 
very interesting. And then, of course, uh, Mastermind on her top dial so that she can potentially Mastermind to She-Hulk to stay around a little bit longer if need be. And then, uh, yeah, Team Player. So I think it's actually a very, very good little 25-point piece. I won't... Obviously, we've seen some insane 25-point pieces, but I think as far as sealed goes, as far as constructed and pulp goes, this is an insane little 25-point celebrity option. Yeah, I think she's really good. I think it's just hilarious, like, piece. I love that Nikki gets a figure in the set. It's kind of funny. I'm like, oh, cool. So, pretty fun. Nah, next up is old Donnie Blaze here. He is very much a... Him inside the mystical castle, I guess, is kind of his beat. So there's kind of a lot of text on this guy. He's like a 45-point rare. It's just like a ton of text on his card. So uh, mystic, celebrity, mystical. But his trade is, ta-da, hey, all part of the show. At the beginning of the game, you make a, you generate a portal marker five squares away from any map edge. At the beginning of your turn, you may generate a 009 demon on click one, adjacent to the portal marker. If you do, you roll a d6. On a 1 through 3, the generated demon is friendly to an opponent's force and is oh, not no. scored when you KO'd this game. So the fact that you're like, yeah, I'll just make a demon really quick. I'll get it all like, up in your grill. Nope. And, oh, that's yours. that's yours. Yep, that's yours. And then it's also it doesn't score. So when you make a demon for your opponent, it's like you can't even, like, so you, you can't farm these demons this way, which is probably a good thing. But then it's like, cool. oh, dang, I just gave my opponent some stuff they're going to mess me with mess me up with a little bit on a four you generate another demon and then you remove the portal marker from the game so that's kind of cool where it's like okay now i i get two demons but then the portal marker's gone on a five through six no effect you just get to make a demon so it's kind of like this random funny thing of ah oh, man i don't know how to close the portal and then if you get lucky on click four you get a close the portal which is kind of funny so what are i like it skin? flavorful they're like flurry shape change no like, and uh, like describe them to me. like what are, how would you describe them oh they're like a little they're like a dubious little creature <laughs> is how i would describe the demons i mean <laughs> oh that's right <laughs> the dubious little creature getting up to mischief getting up to mischief Oh, it is demonic in nature. Very icky. No good. No good. <laughs> uh, and Donnie's got like shape change, barrier, smoke cloud, his entire dial for his five clicks of life. And then he has a speed power called stolen sling ring, which gives him phasing and sidestep free place Donnie blaze or an adjacent from the character up to four squares away from their current square, which by the way is really good. Like, just free place somebody four squares away from their current square. But then if you do, an opponent may place that character up to one square away from their new current square. So, could mess you up there. Maybe it just ends up being you only get three squares of movement. But that's like a free TK. Kind of, not really. A free three square TK at the very it's, least. Yeah, it's, it's pretty uh, close to a free um, wall crawler. Free TK. Yeah, like, yeah, it's kind of interesting. It's like a free uh, TK with five points. He's very if your silly. opponent has like uh, half an Oz. Yeah, your opponent gets half an Oz. Yeah, or if your opponent isn't very smart, maybe you get five square TK and it's amazing. <laughs> maybe they're like, yeah, get up here faster. Yeah, very true. Yeah. All right. Next up, I think this guy. I think it's wild because we haven't seen anyone talking about him online yet. I think this dude's I, awesome, man. I, think I it's like insane. love yeah. this piece. Uh, real name Clint Barton. Ronan has the marksman, shield, assassin, and martial artist keyword. He is number 040 in the set. He has a trait that is, my job has always been to hurt people. Sidestep, when a friendly character is KO'd, until the end of your next turn, Ronan can use charge and flurry. Uh, his full dial, he has stealth as his speed power. So he doesn't have any speed power except for traded sidestep. And then when a friendly character is KO'd, he can use charge and flurry until the end of the next turn. Um, which we were talking before the show, not too hard to do with like constructs and bystanders and stuff. Not hard to KO a friendly character. Not impossible by any stretch. And so, yeah, you could easily have charge flurry the whole dial with this guy. 
he has a special attack power his whole dial that is they got thanos you get me blades claws fangs steel energy once per turn when ronan ko's and a character after resolutions he may move up to two squares and make a close attack so so cool pretty solid he has three clicks with a 12 attack and then three clicks with an 11 the three with a 12 is clicks one two and six and then the clicks with 11 attack are three four and five in the middle and then he has a single stop click that is on click six and uh, stop it's don't give me hope stop free replace ronin with a character named clint martin or hawkeye of equal or less points than ronin on their last non-ko click if you do heal that character two clicks he also on that click has stealth 12 attack three damage range combat expert so he would be a 13 for four if you Ooh. don't do the free if you just i mean take make a, a shot, shot first and then yeah yeah, Switch take a out. shot and then turn him into a uh, Clint Burton or a guy. Um, yeah, since he has a marksman keyword, he can also start with those arrows. But he has stealth his whole dial. Uh, one of the more insane things is on click one, he has a 19 combat reflexes. So he's a 21 from close with stealth. He ignores characters. 55 points. I really like him. I think he's going to be... A potential interesting piece in uh, pulp. I don't know if he's gonna, you know, usurp the uh, Necron orb kind of stuff, but I do think a twenty-one on his own without having to deal with any like defend or anything like that is insane. And then on click two, he gets perplex. So who knows what he's doing? <laughs> like, yeah, I just really like him. Also, it's. It's the first Ronin we've had since Avengers Assemble, and he's not a super rare, so... Man, you're right. Let's let's celebrate that, that sad aspect for a second. I Wait, just hang on. Where's my Ronin ID card? I have it here. Uh, there it is. What's his effect? Um, Clint Barton, Maya Lopez, Eric Brooks, Mark Spector, Alexei Shokshtgov. Modify attack oh, plus one is his inspiration. Cool. Okay. Yep. I Dude, I use my Ronin ID card. I love I love Ronin, man. He is so like this is just straight up end game, beginning of end game Hawkeye as Ronin, and I love it so much. Like this isn't really really not the Hawkeye series Ronin at all. Like this is just straight no. up Martin as Ronin, <laughs> and it's so awesome. Like this is like our real proper first ever endgame piece like we got some comic book characters that like right like i know the doctor strange and like the captain america set was very endgame referential and everything but this is just straight up ronin from endgame and i love i eat this up so much dude like he's so sick he can make three attacks in a turn like that's so gnarly he's just i don't know this dude's got to be a pulp all-star in my mind like i don't know how he's not just wrecking pulp like holy smoke stealth 19 printed combat reflexes like this yeah. is so gnarly i mean if if red widow was like good enough at 45 yeah dude, if I red widow like this, is good enough guy's... and she does not have a stop click yeah like she just gets blown through like this dude's great at 55 all right i'll talk about wong but but only if you then talk about jack and elsa and then i get to talk about man thing because the way this has been flowing <laughs> i gotta talk about man thing i, I mean i can talk about wong if you want to yeah I would actually, last two. that sounds perfect actually i'll do That's wong you do the last two yeah, there you go i agree with that all right like next that. next up we have a unique super rare this is wong he's got the the big portal effect whiz kids which uh, is really showed cool. this off yeah they showed the sculpt off this was one of their uh dialed in kind of previews um Wong has cosmic energy and mystics team ability. Avengers, celebrity, martial artist, mystical keywords. As a trait, I required a worthy opponent. If Wong is adjacent to exactly one opposing character and neither is adjacent to any other character, other characters can't be moved or placed adjacent to either of them and can't target either of them. Little uh, Sheep Shibudu. I don't remember what the name of that trait was, but yeah. Ooh. locking a single opposing character down. Sheepdo. Yeah. Bu- Bushipdo. Bushipdo. That's what it was, yeah. Bushipdo honor trait. Uh, 
Then he has a special speed power for his first five clicks. Phasing teleport, plasticity. When Wong uses phasing teleport after resolutions, he can use flurry as free, which is insane. Top dial, that means he's phasing seven, flurrying 12 for three. Pretty solid. Has plasticity. Other opposing characters can't move adjacent. They need a six to move away in most circumstances. Kind of insane. He has a special stop click on click eight. That is stop super senses toughness when this click is first revealed. Immediately place Wong up to three squares away from his current square, which is just like him quickly porting away. I must depart. He phases. I away. love that. Where yeah. that's that's him just noping out of there is so funny. Yeah, I love that too. And then he has steel energy on click eight, seven, and six, six, seven, and eight, whatever. Um, he has steel energy on those clicks with exploit, so he's got a good chance of healing back up to his uh, special phasing plasticity clicks. And then his special damage power from clicks one through five is the Sorcerer Supreme exploit weakness, prop control, and giant reach of two. So you want to be adjacent to somebody, but even if you're not, you can still punch somebody from a square away, and you can yeah. still phase seven flurry two more squares. So you can technically nine phase square reach. and have a nine square reach. Yeah. Uh, twice. Like, pop, pop. I really like him. I think for 75 points, he's really interesting. I'm glad that he's power cosmic for 75 and uh, mystics. He has some big reducers. He does. I really wish we had flavor text for reducers and like standard powers again, because he just has, you know, impervious and vulnerability toughness that goes to like his stop click. But I really wish I had like something like, um, I don't know, winds of Watum or like, Oh, sure. The the shield of uh, Seraphim or like the something something that like made sense for like reducing stuff. I agree. Like most Doctor Stranges don't get like impervious. So it would be kind of interesting being like what justifies Wong getting like the three main defense reducers besides Invincible. Like holy smokes, you know, like dang. I mean, like Wong is that guy. Don't get me wrong. Absolutely, hundred yeah. percent that guy. But like, what spell is doing this? Just reminded me of flavor text and kind of going back to like a team you played earlier, uh, the Iron Fist, like Spider Man family team. I was like, why does this Iron Fist have mind control poison? Yeah, and like. Right, the, like the mind control was like hypnotic punch or like whatever, and just yeah. like looking at all of Iron Fist's like flavor text on his standard powers were all like martial arts moves they teach at Kun Lun, you know, like at yeah, Iron Fist yeah, like the hypnotic, it was really cool hypnotic punching or like whatever it was, and it's like oh that, like, that explains yeah. why Iron Fist would have mind control because otherwise it's like this makes literally no sense why would iron fist ever have mind control and then it's like boom flavor text that's why and it's like oh that's really cool i will Versus, say for I this long the only thing that i i think would make him better is if on the sorcerer supreme damage power if instead of like exploit prob giant reach two if he had maybe keep the prob but if he had like shape change or super oh, senses geez. and it like did the portal you punch Even yourself more rollouts man like the the whole like when he opens the portal and uh, um abomination pumps punches himself in the face that is like the the version of wong that i'm picturing in this i think it's definitely like it's the whatever abomination shang chi like that's exactly this wong is like that fight scene right so right. With, yeah. like, the small parts in his dial that are clearly the I must depart, where he just leaves from that specific episode of She-Hulk. So it's, like, kind of a mix of those two, but it's very much, like, fighter Wong from, like, Shang-Chi. Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we got to talk about Man-Thing. Black and white, 053B. I will say this worries me just a little bit. It scares me because we saw Elsa... She is also a Prime, the super rare Elsa. We saw the A version, which means I'm assuming that her B version is black and white, which means you can't play this man thing who's black and white with the Elsa that's black and white, which makes me very, very sad. Like, big assumptions here, mm. but like, man, 
correct. You can't it, recreate that episode, or not that episode. That you can't recreate the beginning of that series. Well, the end, because they're black. Well, yeah, I guess you're right. The beginning is when they're both black and white. So yeah, you can't recreate the beginning of the sh- the show when it's like her Jack Man thing, all black and white, which is going to be going to break my heart a little bit. Just kidding. Uh, I ignore. Jalen versus State of Ohio, so I'll play two primes. <laughs> Not in my state. Yeah. Anyways, uh, Man Thing is just really cool. He's 125 points, or he's 75. I love. So we didn't see this on Jack Russell's dial, but the Jack Russell and Elsa chase, Jack and Elsa chase, and this Man Thing super rare have only black and white powers on their dial, which is ah, uh, peace de resistance, very flavorful. I love it. I love the flavor in this set. It's great. Sidestep steel energy traded. I love his speed power, though, man. It's so cool. His speed power is jump scare, stealth. Once per turn, when the second action token is placed on an opposing character, after resolutions, you may place Man-Thing adjacent to that character. So across the map, if you lasso somebody, like uh, the in-cap lasso construct, if you steve somebody with his far-reaching in-cap, whatever... You incapacitate somebody, they get two tokens. Man Thing just gets placed there, and then he can attack or do whatever he wants to do. That is so sick. I love it. So that's his speed power he has on both his top dial, 125 and 75. Uh, so besides his sidestep, that's like his only quote-unquote movement attack. And then he has this special attack power, his entire dial, which is his empathetic burns. A poison, when Man Thing uses it, increase the damage dealt to each character by the number of action tokens on that character, and just straight up Man Thing deals penetrating damage. So it's not just with poison, that's with all attacks, that's with everything. That's awesome. And then he's got some special defense powers mixed in there on his first two clicks for each starting line, and then it goes to regen. So it's Ted, he's called Ted, gives him toughness, willpower. Man Thing takes a maximum of one damage from characters with a lower point value than him. So if he's at 75, that's a lot of things in the metagame, taking only one damage from that. Or if he's at 125, that's like almost everything that's super popular right now in the metagame. Uh, he's only taking like one damage at a time, which is awesome. But that's only on that special defense. So it's only for the first two clicks of his life, and then the like clicks five and six, or the first two clicks of his 75 point line. Uh, He is a giant, so it is weird that he gets willpower from his special defense when he already has, when he's already a colossal, when he's already a giant. Um, But, eh, I don't think that impacts his points much. Like, that's just like a little silly goofum, a little Jon Stewart action happening here. But he's still awesome. Someone really wants to be played with Kamala Khan or Ant-Man that can shrink him down to tiny size. That is true. If he does get ever ever gets shrunk into tiny size, he will still have his willpower, which is kind of nice. I don't don't know what inter. There's like exactly two interactions that like that makes sense for. Yeah, no kidding. And then, uh, so like that's Man Thing. I love Man Thing. I love the love that he got with Man Thing, Howard the Duck, and the Super Man Thing in Wheels. And I love that we're getting two more Man Things. This has got to be. There's going to be four modern legal Man Things. Once next phase comes out, which has got to be the most amount of man things that have ever been modern legal in hero clicks ever at any given point in time. And I want to say, yeah, it. like, yeah, like there's only, not, there's just not many. If only we could hop over to DC side and get like some, some love for swamp thing as well. Cause yeah, no joke. Lord there knows huh? there hasn't been a modern swamp thing or, uh, I've not seen uh, a modern swamp know. thing in a fortnight. Yeah. It's been quite a while. But yeah, man, thing once again, just bro, an amazing like whatever knows fear burns. Yeah, man thing's I, touch. I, I, I don't think I've it. ever been disappointed in a man thing dial. Like I think the I ADW one was awesome. The uh, amazing Spider Man was awesome. Uh, this one, we haven't seen the non prime, but like, I yeah, don't know. I'm I'm sure it'll be equally enjoyable. And Next yeah, up, I, I love the the black and white aesthetic dude, that they're going with. It's so really cool. Fun. Just I'm just such a big fan of it. The chase that old Scott here pulled in his brick. Scott Rubin. Not a def, not any other Scott. Scott Rubin. Uh, pulled Jack and Elsa. They are also mystics. And they are, once again, black and white aesthetic. They can move through characters and they can shoot while based. Which, as you get into this, so they're a duo figure. They're two people on one dial. 
and I love the way they've been making duo figures make sense without being like, oh yeah, here's the duo attack symbol because they retired that. This is so awesome. So number one, their trade is fighting for the Bloodstone. Jack and Elsa and adjacent friendly characters have. If this character has been damaged this turn, they take a maximum of one damage from attacks. These black and white folk love only taking one damage at a time. They're just like, no, 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 no. We will not go quietly into the night. We will not be bombarded with whatever. So uh, the fact that give us to all adjacent people, I if they have already pardon, it, sir. Yeah. This is like, a noir film. No character leaves immediately. You can't, you can't write me out of the noir film right away. That's not what happens. It's awesome. So... Yeah, so they, they already get damaged. Maybe you do hit them for eight damage right away and you KO them. In which case, rip Jack and Elsa. It's been fun. But if not, then they only take one damage the rest of the turn. And that's every character next to them. This is awesome. Their speed power, they have the first three and last two clicks with some stealth in between. They have seven clicks of life. Is charge flurry. And then here's another sick, like, really cool thing about it. When Jack and Elsa use flurry, one of the attacks may be a ranged attack. Hello, Captain America and Black Widow, anybody? This is freaking awesome. I love this. They can shoot out of adjacency. How freaking cool is that? Yeah, this is sick. I love this. I love that ability. It's awesome. Uh, and then their special defense is combat reflexes, super senses, toughness. Just a very solid defense power they have for their first five clicks. They have some outwit sprinkled in there. They have four range, two targets. Wow, I love this chase. They are so fun. They're so flavorful. Yeah, they're just so sick. We got some regen down dial. We got some steel energy down dial as well. Using the black and white powers, they have like no attack power the first three clicks, and they have no damage power on clicks four and five. So it's just a very nice spread of black and white. And I love it, man. I'm loving the flavor in this set. I think this set just has such winners. I am just getting sold the more and more I see the fun, flavorful, TV show accurate figures like the Endgame Ronin. All the stuff from yeah. She-Hulk being so flavorful has been so fun. The World by Night stuff is like literally how many of them chase boosters am I allowed to buy, fellas? Because if it's like Super Prime Man things yeah. in there, Super Prime Elsa's in there, Jack and Elsa are in there. I was really some of the chase boosters. I was hoping for more like Hawkeye and Moon Knight stuff, but like oh, after sure. seeing the first couple um, Werewolf by Night figures that we've seen, I'm afraid that like. I'm afraid that they're all going to be like super air primes, super airs, and chases. And I don't know. At least there won't be a lot of figures to collect. It'll just be expensive ones. Yeah, kind of true. All the all the dopest stuff. I mean, that's like kind of every set is all the dopest stuff is up in there in the high rarities. But like, man, this is like the dopest stuff is in the high rarities. And I really, I'm really been enjoying it. So that's next phase. I'm getting pumped. Between our unboxing and Scott's unboxing here, I'm really excited. So make sure also stay tuned. Go check out the figures.com article by all means, but also stay tuned on our YouTube channel. And there's pizza boxes. They're being opened. We're eating pizza, ladies and gentlemen. Also, we're eating lots of pizza. Uh, we're recording this on February 5th, but on February yeah. 7th, Ooh. HeroClix USA's unboxing will begin. I'm not exactly sure how he's doing it. If he's doing it all in one go, if he's doing a bunch of boosters, half a brick. I don't. I don't know what he's doing. But he did premiere. He did a little teaser um, with some figures that he pulled. So he said that'll start on February seventh, which will be the Wednesday that you're hearing this. I'm from just looking at his teaser. There are some things that I'm very excited to see what they do. There's yeah. Very, there's very a. Uh, Two figures that I definitely didn't expect to see, and I'm wondering what they do. Because I, I thought I already right. saw one of them, and I did not, apparently, because it's a different sculpt. So, Yeah, psych. Yep. It's like you thought. Just Try kidding. Again. There's two of these. Yep. what it do? what it do? I want to see it. I want to know now. I'll have to wait until February 7th, but still, I'm very excited. Very, very excited. What can I say? But, yeah. Let's go ahead and jump into some listener questions and wrap up the show. There are dozens of us. Dozens! On our Patreon, if you want to support Dial H for Hero Clicks, all that we do, all the live coverage we do, all the cool unboxings that we do, the fun skits, the podcast, whatever, if you want to support that, consider joining our Patreon. Five bucks a month gets you access to the Discord, behind-the-scenes videos, uh, the 
all the bloopers and gags reel gag reels from our next phase skit and these next phase unboxings are up on patreon now or will be by the time you join the patreon as well as we have a great community we like a lot of discords can just kind of be not super crazy cool or fun or just like dominated by five people but we've had people message us and be like we have one of the best this is not even me being like whatever this is actually a real life message from a listener like you saying that we have like one of the best discords which is really cool and it means a lot so we're also we hang out if you ever want to see people will join general and just chat hero clicks team building we'll play bad samaritan which is a fun hero clicks guessing game and this is where we get most of our questions for the show because it's just a very simple way for people to ask questions in the channel so matt reed asks who wins in a one-on-one slap fight if you can't decide here please do a video to see who's a better slap fighter i i once again the tortillas have taught me Simeon's got the heat. He's got the beard. I think it's a strong edge. I think. Is this out is of, it one-on-one on one one me us. versus you? Is that what this is? I assume it's one-on-one on one okay. me versus you, or it's like out of the three of us, even like Ian included, I still oh, think man. Simeon takes it. Ian would have, so the if momentum this is like up, Dana is White slap momentum? fight, there's rules. If this was like just random slapping, Ian's got the reach. Got, he does have the reach. Yeah, he's got if we're doing like slap arms. fights. We do slap fight rules. Oh man! I think you take it. I will say I've been I've been hit in the face quite a few times in the last few weeks. Oh jeez! <laughs> not Gosh. on purpose or by anyone that was well, malicious intent. Just the oh hazard of the job is. I see. Apparently, being slapped in the face. Gosh. I don't I don't know if that gives me an edge or not, but yeah, I don't. I guess we would have to do, we'd have to video it to see. Oh no! Maybe that's We're a gonna have donation to video it. here. Oh gosh! We'll drop the tortillas and just do regular slaps next time. Oof! Maybe, maybe. Uh, next up, Wesley R. What would you think of bringing back perplexing damage? But if you do, you negatively modify your attack or defense by the same amount. I don't know, Simeon. My first thought is just too complex. I, yeah. I really love where we're at right now with the whole perplexing th- situation. I My biggest thing is I love that perplexing damage left and suddenly empower and enhancement became things that people really built with and really thought about and like added to their team. And it wasn't just like, oh, that that character that has like enhancement, like, yeah, I could throw them on, but like I, I'd rather just like perplex. And you could still do that with this change, but... I don't like the added complexity of keeping track of like three different stat modifiers rather than one. So damage goes up, attack and defense go down by the same. I don't like that. And I think that it would just never be used. If my I defense think... is going down every time yeah. I perplex damage, I'm either going all in for one big hit or I'm just going to keep building with like enhancement and power. I think this is a fun ability for, like, an Iron Man to have, where it's, like, Jarvis, reroute all power to damage or thrusters. Like, that would be a really cool ability. But I think for standard perplex, I like where it's at right now. I like that you have to, I don't know, be have a little bit more tactic in my miniatures tactical strategy game. Have a bit more tactics, have a bit more strategy with bumping damage, right? With empower, placement. I feel like it's shifted whatever else. more towards I like that. perplexing speed and like range. Perplexing speed, range. Like maybe um, attack, but like even then, you know, I've got Avengers, I've got ranged combat expert. I've got things that like, you know, modify my attack pretty easily. Right. I think it's mostly being used for for range and like maybe opposing defenses or something. So I like it. I like where perplex is at. I like that it's not just <laughs> vulture prime perplex up damage a million times perplex up attack and then send somebody out there like imagine how much worse so let's say you have a 25 point perplex piece which is what mantis and all right easy peasy lemon squeezy i want to buff my prime spider-man when i send him across the board i'll perplex him who cares mantis's defense goes down yeah uh like all right. Well, and this is that essentially or, is what um, the Joker gas canister did was like gave you right. a negative two attack or no negative two da- defense, negative two to defense plus one attack and damage, or something like that, and then battle fury. So yeah, negative two defense plus one attack and damage, 
and then Battle Fury is what the Joker gas canister did. And people loved putting that on Vulture. That's true. Well, that is also true. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I just, I don't know. I don't like the idea of perplexing damage. I liked that change. I think it makes the game better, makes it less feel bad stuff. So, yeah. Goop, MF Goop asks, if we were to get Power Rangers, what mechanic would you like to see tied to the Rangers? And then he gives us options. <laughs> The options are shifting focus, secret identity, swap, and team up cards. I'm going to say none of these. I think shifting focus doesn't make sense for Power Rangers, like, at all, right? Like, the Blue Rangers never, like, let me go back in time when a different person was the Blue Ranger, <laughs> and now I'm him, and I have the power of I was thinking, Triceratops, you know? I was like, thinking, like, shifting focus would make more sense. He's like, I've got my battle axe. Just kidding. I like like swiveled okay. it, cocked it, and now it's like battle axe shotgun. Um, I guess that shifting focus. For some reason, all their ranger. melee weapons also double as like blasters. I mean, like everything should. Yeah. Our rangers had it right. Uh, I guess I'd be okay to... with like that. Yeah. Uh, I don't like the idea of swap. Again... That would no. be like Zordon power. Well, that's just because Swap is the worst. Um, yeah, if Zordon really had like the Professor, like the uncommon Professor X or Magneto thing, where it was just like right. all Power Rangers could like shift to like whatever, same power, same points, blah blah blah, shift them around. It would make sense. I, I just think, wouldn't like it. You know, there should be a Power Ranger shared trait for each generation of Power Rangers, and then I do think some kind of turn into a zord i don't know how they would do that all the power rangers are adjacent or whatever the, the Yu -Gi -Oh kind of combined thing that like certain Yu -Gi -Oh figures could do where it was like if you hit and you were adjacent to like three other characters that had these like names then you could replace all three of them with blah 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 so like if you were in the okay. right formation and you hit you got to like change into a zord but it was on whatever the click, whatever click, the lowest click number that one of the characters that was there was on. I think that's that's essentially what the Yu-Gi-Oh thing did, um, with like the, the X Y Z dragon and the other one that did that. I can't remember. Yeah, that's right. Okay, they did have an ability. Okay, then yeah, do that. I like be, that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Like my my Power Ranger knowledge is like from Mighty Morphin to somewhere past lost in space or rpm or something never read the comic books don't know about the grid don't know about any of that stuff um i think if you just did like a 70 figure set like if they were actually going to do it and you just did a 70 figure set and you just did multiple options i don't think you need to shift or have gimmicks i think just good dials for each different type like people would be fine with it it'd be good maybe maybe a swap Maybe like one Ultra Chase Zord on that makes them competitive because he lets you swap all of them together. Ooh. I mean, that's the competitive stuff right there, bro. The cheap swap guy that lets you just yeah. do whatever. And he's like, Zord on OP. Alpha, find me an Isaac Arnold Berkowitz with attitude. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. And then he's like, just kidding. Jeez. He's no longer a teen. Oh, no. Uh. Gosh. Next up, Bill. Bill with the question of a bygone era. Why do characters with flight take falling damage? The answer is because it's simpler this way. Because it's easier. I think it makes sense in most circumstances. If, um, so like anyone other than like Superman, because Superman nothing really makes sense for. Let's say, uh, let's say Falcon, right? He flies. Falcon's he flying, does. right? He gets hit with like a a taser, a stun, a stun beam. He's going to fall. Okay, yeah. And like hit the ground eventually, uh, unless he like you know manages to like wake up halfway through, which which is like very comic accurate that they would do that. Um, the the thing that doesn't make sense is if Falcon's flying there and he's like flying above you know, like a two-story building, and then the Hulk grabs that two-story building out from under him, he's still just flying there. So, like, that shouldn't cause him to take fall damage, unless 
it was such a surprise and there was like a vacuum and he just got like sucked down and like hit the ground but no i think the like the normal like knockback off of elevated fall damage for flying characters makes plenty of sense they're like stunned so they're yeah yeah. yeah like if i'm on the ground and i get knocked down i will take fall damage because like i'm even though i walk on the ground all the time i'm still falling just like how a flyer would fall i don't know it makes sense to me but i see what you mean okay i see what you mean the the old ways of the you know, back in my day uh, f- people didn't take, like, flight characters that could fly didn't take damage when they were knocked off, like, a piece of elevated terrain. But it's all gotten simplified now, and I think, honestly, everything you made, like, the points you made, Simeon, kind of makes sense, where it's like, okay. They also, typically, if they're going to take any kind of falling damage, which doesn't exist, just knockback damage now, but you're going to take any knockback damage, you just got hit. So... You just got punched in the mouth. Come on, fly boy, fly. Why are you falling <laughs> to the ground, you idiot? Just because you got punched in the mouth, you're gonna you're gonna fall all the way to the ground? Wow. Yeah, you know? So I feel like it makes sense. Yeah, Iron Man suit's gotta reboot. Your little uh, stun, killer you're moth is just rocker. like absolutely oh, I mean, killer unconscious. Moth. Yeah, hundred percent. So I think it's pretty valid as to why characters that fly would take falling damage. It's just like they just got hit. You know? Makes sense to me. Uh, Wesley R has got a couple more questions here. How game-changing will Kong be for competitive? Since he will likely be legal for Adepticon, should teams be built with him or to specifically counter him? I feel like if anyone plays him at Adepticon, and don't take this as gospel, this is just a thought, it's just an opinion, just a maybe, they're probably only playing him at 50 points. At which case, there's a 40-point piece with any equipment can one-shot him, and that's called Captain America. So... I think if you're worried about Kong and you're also just like, well, what's something I can put on my team? That's also just good in general for the entire field. Maybe just play a Pegasus Captain America. Uh, I do think Kong is worth considering 100% for like competitive play. I think people have mentioned that 200 points could be worth it. Um, We got to see what competitive modern kind of looks like. And I'll call this the experimental era of modern with the two new sets with not many events happening. We got to see that down at Florida. So I imagine a lot of people will be copying things that was either in Florida or taking what lost to what into account when they build for Adepticon. And also, yeah, I think you should probably plan to potentially face a Kong. Is he legal? I actually have the monthly releases pulled up, and I was kind of curious about that. So Kong comes out. It'll be very close. I don't remember. It's going to be close, right? Where are you, Kong? Scroll up to the top. Next phase, March, Peacemaker, March. Oh, wow, Peacemaker's March already? That's kind of awesome. Can't wait for that. Next phase, March, 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 Hellfire Gala, April. Okay, I think Kong is out in February. Let's scroll to the bottom. Kong is out. It looks like it's 3-6, so it's March 6th is Kong. Adepticon is the 20th. I can't remember. Our, it's one week from week, release. One week after release. Even yeah. for Iconics, are, do these not follow an LE rule? Are they just like one week after release? Yeah, I honestly they, can't remember. These don't follow that rule, okay. so they are just one so week he's, from release. So straight up, Kong is legal for Adepticon. I mean, yeah, I think you can kind of... I don't think you could lose sleep over Kong. I think, like, run a team that has Captain America on it, don't let him get punked right away, and that'll give you some pretty good... And if you can do... Utilize his hypersonic speed good enough, then I think you're pretty well off against yeah, I, Kong. Kong is also just very similar to, like, Prime Spider-Man. I think like, a honestly... better use of your time would be watching all of our 300 modern I agree with that. I agree from, with that. From Champion Clicks. Um, anytime you see a figure that's 50 points in our 300 modern live stream of champion clicks, which would have been day two, um, of the champion clicks, uh, those live streams, anytime you see a 50 point figure, you can think would a 50 point Kong fit in this. Some people have talked about playing Kong at 200 points, but I, man, I have a hard time believing that 200 point Kong is getting anywhere close to past somebody like like Josafa running that, like yeah, uh, I don't know how the hundred point Kong is really going to do that. I like, think it's just like getting absolutely right. burned through because he burned through some of the hardest dials in three hundred modern, and he went undefeated up until like top eight, 
And yeah, I I have a feeling that um, something like that is way more likely to win. 50 point Kong being slotted in for like a Carnage Surfer. I can see that because there's a potential that he'll, even though it's only at 50 point, uh, 50 points, there's still a potential that he'll get two actions a turn and the double willpower, depending on like what the, like your opponent or like their opponent is built to. Um, and then there's also like the option of like equipping him and stuff like that. There's also, you know, you could play multiple Kongs. I just, I don't think they're as interesting at 50 points, even with the prospect of like for 50 points, you could have Chathon on it and have plus one oh, to yeah. all the stats and stuff. It's, it's a definite build that can happen. I don't think it'll take many people by surprise, and I don't think it's strong enough to just straight up surprise and beat something that's already an existent meta team. I think, like, two Carnage Silver Surfers will see a Kong with a Chathon on it, and they'll be like, ah, oh, that's crazy. He has high stats and blah, blah, blah. I'm just going to double tap, I don't know, like, uh... Blackheart or whatever is also on the team. Yeah, I mean, I agree with that 100%. Now, this next question is a little more in depth. I typically avoid Silver Age events because the pool of figures for it is too large, and the field gets even larger with every rotation. There are so many figures that nobody can know what they all do, and half the game is trying to learn the figures or getting blindsided by some power you've never heard of. What are some possible ways to break Silver Age into not like break silver age but break it up into more manageable events restrict certain events by limiting keywords restrict teams to sets released in specific range of years so i think that's part of the fun of silver age is how much is allowed to be played i will say as someone that like the very specific like meta impotence of uh, impotence of where i joined into playing competitively is at the start of silver. Yeah. I am one of those. I'm right there with you too. <laughs> absolutely remembers almost every like interesting thing from the start of silver to modern. Like as soon as silver got announced, I instantly was like handstand Spidey, uh green lantern from like jo- Joker's wild. Like I was instantly yeah. like all the things that I used to play with. I was looking at them, seeing if they were like worth anything. If like, you know, do the points hold up? So much of the interesting stuff is either high point investment from like old, those old sets that's not worth playing, like uh, Chameleon, super interesting. Oh, geez. Probably not yeah, worth playing man. in silver, even though he still does something really ridiculous and interesting. Probably not. Uh, Devil Dino, not worth interest, like not worth playing at all. So sad that he's not worth playing yeah. anymore. I love one Devil of the so much, but it's so true. He's yeah. so overcosted now. Absolute best bystander generator oh, of his so time, awesome. probably of like quite a wild time. I don't know how far it goes forwards, but for a hundred points, you're talking like two Carnage Silver Surfers. You're talking like yeah. two Sky Tyrants. Oh, you're talking man. two Scarabs. You're talking two of like a, a million things that are insanely broken. Um, yeah, you, you do really don't know, don't need to know what everything does. I would say for bronze, for golden, that sentiment is very true. But for silver, you can go to one big silver tournament and see what, how how old is the normal like build. And I think like you're gonna see like Thanos from ABPI is like fairly old. Um, you'll see a few tech pieces from a little bit older than that, maybe. But you're not gonna see like full like full archetypes from ancient builds. You're not gonna see that, I don't think. Yeah. The Yeah, I mean it's silver, man. It's fun. It's fun to be rewarded for being an old person and playing the game for yeah. so long. Like I agree with you. Like around when silver started is when I was starting to play competitively the most. But like really it's more like Deadpool to Guardians of the Galaxy, like when those sets were legals, when I was, was like playing competitively, that like War of Light era. But that was also just right before Silver started. So, and then with the start of Silver is really when I started being like, I'm playing competitively and I actually know how to play the game now. Uh, right. So I think mean, really yeah, it, was, it was less, uh, I have all the figures and it was more like, 
I can actually understand what like high level people are exactly, doing yeah. right now. That was yeah. Yeah. So, you know, silver is rewarding for that, but even then, silver's really not that much silver age stuff. That's kind of honestly the problem and kind of why I like I don't love 400 point silver. I don't necessarily love what that is. I think 300 points and then saying 150 and 150 modern silver, I would be okay with versus the 200 and 200. Um, that's a format for silver that I would really like. Yeah. I also do just like theme being silver. I actually really enjoy theme being silver. However, uh, theme being silver does make celebrity like probably the default best uh, theme thing. Probably. So it's probably pretty close. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah, pretty close. So I like modern theme a lot more right now because Celebrity's not great in modern, which we saw even at 400 points at Champion Clicks. So I like silver, though. I like, I think if silver was like 150, 150, that's good because even the silver stuff's not that amazing. There's only a couple of things that have really been good and then also yeah what you say about like a weird combo that's like the fun part about silver is like oh wow someone found out this old weird combo so i don't think 400 50 50 modern silver is the best way to play silver i think maybe 300 just open silver but i do like the idea of making someone play more silver pieces than modern pieces because if you want to play modern then just play modern but let the old yeah. stuff get played again. That's the fun part about silver. And I, yeah, I think That's silver I pulp would be interesting. Oh, that'd be um, really cool. But yeah. Silver, silver is entirely. What's the cheapest old mechanics that I can add to a Pretty modern much. team? Um, so like six point symbiote is one of the oldest equipments that you're, I mean, I'd, I don't even remember if that was an equipment or if it's considered a relic, but uh, yeah, like you, it was an equipment. Okay, so like, yeah, the, the six point symbiote, which was the equipable plasticity shape change and breakaway, automatic breakaway. That was insane for the time. There's really nothing from Superior Foes that stands up to the modern point formula. Like, I, I wish like Power Man, Iron Fist, I wish Handstand Spidey. Handstand Spidey is 100 points for six clicks long. People. Yeah. Went insane with like how utility and how good he was. He's an eleven for three for a hundred points with no reducer. He has super senses. And like yeah, like it, it's insane how much people like thought he was like completely unhinged at the time for a hundred points. Now you would never look at him for a hundred points for like what he does. Uh you need like stop clicks for a hundred points. You need a bunch of different stuff. Frogman, he's got a legacy card that's actually better now. So, like, the Silver Age version isn't that great. Mephisto, very interesting for 45 points. I think that's a tech piece. That's not something you really build around, but that's something, like, if you're doing some sort of mind control chain, Mephisto being in there, and uh, every time you mind control somebody and they make an attack, you give them a contract token. Then Ooh. for the rest of the game, they have that minus one defense value. I used to love that combo when it was legal, and in silver, that's even it's even better. He just sadly for forty five points, he literally does nothing else. Like that is the entire thing that he does. Um, at superior foes, I I honestly don't even think you look at like overdrive as like a taxi anymore. Like I know Dang. when we first started talking I mean, about it, like not when not when flash and copyable green lantern exists yeah. i guess no man he's, oh, he's rip overdrive he the taxi a, oh. yeah. when we first started talking about silver i know he like came up a few times and i was just like i don't think like with chip with with uh yeah like 30 point flash with with all the options throughout the ages i just don't think you even think about him even though he has like hey. empower and stuff man um most of the stuff from the turtles, probably not. Maybe some shredders if you want to. If you want to do some yeah, shredders, yeah, you want to ping, ping some people, yeah. Things that like never get redone. Things that were a one-off and we've never seen again. So like Bizarro Green Arrow, his effect for I fifty mean, points. That dude, yeah. Carter Surfer. All right, whatever. Yeah, Bizarro Green Arrow. 
Yeah, you. Oh, you wanted to hit my Bizarro Green Arrow twice. Great. With a, a minus two to your damage value twice. <laughs> Great. That's fine. Also, I have two stop clicks. So, like, <laughs> yeah. Like, that's, yeah. Bizarro Green Arrow, I, if, I don't know why he hasn't been in more silver. Maybe it's because it's theme and he's only got monster keyword. I don't know. Um, yeah, Joker's gas canister. My favorite, the 35 point green, green lantern with the, uh, the free walls. There's been cheaper figures that also do free barrier. So he's already like kind of gone by the wayside. That's basically it for Joker's wild. Like we've had, we even have better versions of, um, outsiders. So even the cheaper outsiders from that set, not so great anymore. Uh, Pim Tank is one thing that you, if you don't know what it does, you should absolutely figure out and learn what it does because that is very true. <sighs> in silver, if you get Pim Tanked, that sucks. It sucks. Yeah, there's, it feels bad. There's no way around it. Like if if you don't know what it does, and then like suddenly your opponent it starts hurts. reading off the Pim Particle Tank, and they're like, "Just kidding! It's now a full size tank." You are about to enter the world of 2017 pain that uh, cannot be escaped. Um, yeah, I mean, even remember when Lila Cheney was like the like go to oh, man, That's absolute taxi right insane there. Insane taxi. There's the X Men taxi. Yeah, oh, but she's phasing, only 25 points. 25 points phasing passenger four. But it was like only to carry like X Men celebrities, like characters she shared it's a keyword with. New Mutants and X Men only. Yeah. 14 speed though, Simeon. 14 Whoa. speed nowadays. Yeah, that's that's a small map. Good. In one go. But so. also, Flash just does that for five more points. I mean, yeah. you need a Green Lantern TA <laughs> to copy at least. But like, still. Andy's it's like true. an attacker. Andy can do anyone. Yeah. Um, Man, wow. I think one wow. of the biggest things that uh, if you didn't play in this age is retaliation. Um, just like search on any any unit search search for the word retaliation or um i guess yeah i think just retaliation will pull up all of them but yeah like your your surter your tricentinal your uh man gog adam nope adam's not Adam's not uh, silver. No, he's, he's not silver. Thank goodness cool. Adam's not silver legal. But like yeah. Mangog, dude, he'll mess you up. If you don't know, Yeah, he'll mess you up. Saw a lot of people lose an entire game because of one solid Mangog drop. From ADW, there's not really anything that you got to worry about. No? No, they, I mean, they banned Hawkeye, so... Yeah, and even hey, if they did work, even yeah, if they didn't. I don't think like the way the wording works anymore. I don't know if he could keep attacking. Um, a Meridroid, one of my favorites. Oh yeah, um, if you're a Meridroid is one of like the reasons, other than like stop sign and lantern constructs. A Meridroid is one of the reasons why one man armies are a bad idea because for 15 points I can throw your figure like eight squares away and drop him exactly where I want and then just kill box him with like 17 attacks or something. A Meridroid is insane for 15 points. Um, and even like if against like a normal team, just like breaking up formation, throwing like one heavy attacker to my side. Peace Machine, that's something we heard a lot about for a long, yeah. long, long time. And I still haven't heard anything about him in uh silver Nobody plays peace machine bro yeah that suppression Nobody field got... uh not so suppressing anymore i guess i mean making sure everybody friendly and opposing takes a max of three damage i mean that's still but once again 50 points yeah 50 Kinda points no ids nothing like for him to really do other than sidestep tk outwit and yeah like i think people are fine with only dealing three damage like people are like i'll just plink you a ton of times uh yeah we don't make, need to make it into like a, a complete silver dropout episode yeah Ooh, elijah snow though there's a tech piece that no one will ever dude use. there was on players and collections around the world mcconnell lamar he's been posting some team builds and i absolutely love these posts somebody was playing merlin Spider-Man 1776, Elijah yes. Snow, and yes. like one other piece. And I'm just Shaman? like, wow. 
<laughs> slowing it down, bringing the game to an absolute crawl, ladies and gentlemen. Like that is hilarious. I love, yeah. I love that team. That's Invincible awesome. Iron Man Shaman isn't Shaman by oh. any means, but. If you're playing like Golden Age and you play him and Elijah Snow, you're just trying to be a jerk. You're just trying to ruin someone's day. You're like, Correct. not only can you not fly, you also, for the rest of the game, have to move in a direct path only. Oh, Pretty funny. Man. So rough. Really funny. If you're worried about silver, I would go through some of the older sets. For the most part, you can ignore the common, uncommon, rare, the CUR. Not always but for the most for the part, most part yeah. you can and i think you'll see there's really like most of the interesting stuff is just too highly costed nowadays um most people aren't going to play the same stuff same stuff that was winning five years ago just doesn't make sense so like the reason why right like floor colossus was getting played in multiples the 10 point line was so good was because it gave you a boost to your uh, theme team now it doesn't do that. You're at max plus three, so it just doesn't. Gonna, it's not going to see play anymore. Now Mangog still does the exact same thing that he did all those years ago for thirty points that he does today for thirty points. So that's insane and scary. Maybe keep an eye out for that. <laughs> same with like Carnage and uh, Surtur. For the most part, yeah, I think Silver is uh, just kind of ebbs and flows. I don't think there's like one big silver thing that you have to worry about. There's a few things that like maybe they'll catch you off guard. Like you, your opponent might play a Unimind and not mention the Errata, and you'll be like, "Oh wow, your damage is now uh, seven and your attack is fourteen. I can't believe that." And your opponent will be like, "Yeah, that's that's just how cool I am. I lie about stuff. I don't know." <laughs> yeah. Here's a figure I want remade though. Zarko the Tomorrow Man. Oh, please. I love Zarko the Tomorrow Man. He's so awesome. He had one of the coolest effects. Dude, booping around the map. Yeah. He's so funny, man. Oh, you hit me? Just kidding. I'm over here, and I healed. Haha. Arthur Zarko. The one quick shout-out I want to do, Jonathan Virgilio here of Action Objects. He is doing a little free shipping thing on his website. So if you use code MISTIT, all caps, M-I-S-S-E-D-I-T, MISTIT, you get some free shipping on some pretty cool stuff. I bought some dice from him. I bought some action tokens from him. So check that out. So much shout out on the podcast. There's a quick little shout out. Some really cool 3D printed effects and things that you can get from there. And also, yeah, if you missed Champion Clicks, a.k.a. if you missed it, uh, you'll be able to go ahead and order some stuff with free shipping. It's pretty cool. Yeah. One of our listeners, Seth, messaged me and asked me how to get in touch with him. So oh, right on. I uh, linked his his web page. But yeah, if you want to check out some, not action objects, if you want to check out some uh, hero clicks, some uh, newest hero clicks, sealed and oh. singles, <laughs> you can check out coolstuffinc.com. Use code DIAL5 to save 5% off when you do so. And uh, right now, I don't know. I should have checked. What do they have on sale? They always have something on sale. They're doing a Groundhog Day sale that had some stuff. I don't know if they're doing anything right now. Groundhog Day sale. Uh, They have, I can see a, that is a a Thor of some sort. They've got Agnes, Ajak, Algrim. Algrim from Thor the Dark World. Woo. Oh, baby. They got Angela the Prime from the Mighty Thor. Angela the Not Prime from War of the Realms. Uh, so they're all, they're all into the Asgardian stuff for Groundhog's Day, it looks like. Uh, oh, it's Gods and Monsters sale. That's what they're doing. That's what uh. they're doing. Okay. Um, check them out. Use code DIAL5 to save 5% off. And if you want to go direct to the source, go to shop.wizkids.com. And use code dial h10 to save 10 percent off they've got some interesting sales as well they'll have some more coming up soon i'm sure we'll be talking about it uh, shortly but who knows what they're going to be just right now but shop.wizkids.com use code dial h10 and you'll save 10 percent off of all your orders that are hero clicks and aren't special order 
specialty figs or yeah, special figs uh pre orders and iconics. That's what it is. That's right. And ladies and gentlemen, for all your hero who's content, podcasts, videos, and more, make sure to dial H. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Not going there. That's how numbers work. Over oh, yeah. six oh, people right. think I am funny. I'm your Captain America. That was just you in a costume. Well, the rest of the case uh, doesn't matter.